Today on Quick Tips, we're going to look at how to calculate tidal streams using a tidal atlas and an almanac. Okay, so first of all, um, it's just worth pointing out that we're looking at two different, um, an almanac and a, an atlas. Uh, the Solent and adjacent waters are the area that this particular stream, tidal stream atlas, covers. And I'm using the Channel Almanac, the Ridge Channel Almanac. So those are the two documents that I'm using in order to calculate tidal flow information uh, in this area. Right, so that's what a um, tidal flow or tidal stream atlas looks like. And you can see we've got a page for every hour of the tidal uh, tidal flood and tidal ebb, uh, based around high water. And it's high water uh, Portsmouth in this instance. So always check what the tidal atlas refers to. You can see it also refers to one hour, 20 meters, sorry, one hour, 20 minutes. I think it is after Dover high water. So you could use Dover or Portsmouth dependent on whether or not you've got the high water times for Dover or Portsmouth. But the Almanac has both, so let's use Portsmouth, it's easier. Uh, as you can see, there are arrows. So those arrows, the, the bigger the arrow, the darker and deeper the arrow, uh, the more tidal flow there is. The smaller the arrow, the less uh, tidal flow there is. And then you can see there are numbers adjacent to the arrows, or to adjacent to some of the arrows. Um, and um, those numbers, for instance, you've got there 16,32. Um, it's actually 1.6 and 3.2. We'll go into that in a, a little bit, but you can see basically there are parts of the um, terrain which have more tidal flow at specific times of the, um, of the day, dependent on how far before or after high water we are. Uh, you can also see that we've got a latitude and longitude scale across the side so that we can determine with some accuracy when those tidal flows were taken when they were surveyed. So um, it can be relatively accurate. And as I say, it's high water Portsmouth that this tidal stream atlas is referring to. So you need to know the time of high water in Portsmouth on the day that you're sailing so that you can work out tidal flow for the 12 hours the six hours either side of high water Portsmouth on that day. And you can see each page has got a different flow. And you've got slack water there on the top page. And then it starts to flood at six hours after high water. Okay, so um, let's first of all look at the high water Portsmouth page and fill that in for the appropriate tidal hour for the day that we're sailing. So here is a tidal atlas, uh, sorry, tidal alma, sorry, an almanac. And uh, you can see the tidal information here for Portsmouth. So the areas shown in green shaded, uh, those are uh, times as a universal time uh, or Greenwich Mean Time. In other words, our standard time in the UK. Um, if you're looking at an area which is not shaded, so anywhere that's white, then that is British summer time, which is one hour ahead of Greenwich Mean Time. So for an area that is non-shaded, so for instance April, we need to add one hour to get to British summer time because everything is in Greenwich Mean Time. So uh, let's have a look and let's choose Saturday the 4th of April. Uh, high water is 815, 0815 at 3.9 metres, that's high water. 0815 on Saturday 4th of April, that's UTC or Greenwich Mean Time, same thing. That's our high water in Portsmouth. So um, we're going to put a time for high water Portsmouth onto this hour of the tidal flow. Now we have to add one hour because we're now in summertime, British summertime. So adding one hour to make it BST. So that gives us 0915 as high water Portsmouth. But we need to calculate the tidal hour. So the tidal hour, it's not a difficult calculation. 
it's basically we're assuming that the tide is doing what it says it's doing on that page half an hour either side of the specific time we've calculated from the uh, almanac so we've got 0915 BST is high water so half an hour before that and half an hour after that that makes up our entire tidal hour and that is the time we write in as the beginning of the tidal hour on this particular page of high water Portsmouth so let's write that in 0845 which is half an hour before 915 to 0945 that's our tidal hour so once we've got our tidal hour we can then write in 0845 onto our page for high water put in BST so that we know we've done the conversion already and that tells us that that's what the tidal flow is doing at that time at high water an hour later an hour after 9:45 BST 10:45 BST is two hours after and so on and we can do that before and after high water so that for the entirety of that day we know what tide flow is doing in that location uh, now if we just look at to clarify what I was saying about the numbers we've got 04 comma 09 so 04 comma 09 represents 0 0.4 knots of tidal flow at neeps or 0 0.9 knots of tidal flow at springs at that location and it's flowing in the direction of the arrow and obviously as the tide ebbs and floods the direction and the velocity of the water will change so the tidal flow will change both in direction and in speed and if it springs where we've got a lot more water moving in and out in the same time period then of course the tidal flow will be stronger that's why we've got 0 0.4 or 0 0.9 in that location other locations 1.6 and 3.2 um, 1.4 and 2.8 so you can get all sorts of different fly um, different uh, tidal streams Okay, so that shows you how to calculate tidal streams, uh, both the rate and the direction, for any given hour on any given day, as long as you've got the tidal information for the standard port being used in the, in the atlas, and you have an almanac covering those tidal uh, high water times. So as long as you know the high water time for the day, uh, or the times for the day, and you have a tidal atlas showing the uh, day part broken up into um, six hours either side of high water, then you can always know what your tidal flow uh, direction and rate is going to be, depending on whether you're on neaps or springs. There is also, um, for um, people that are getting a little bit more advanced, a um, computation of rates calculation, which will give you a more accurate interpolation between neaps and springs. But for for the day skipper candidate on the IOA course, if you're halfway between Neeps and Springs and you take an average of the two, then that would be good enough. Um, I hope that that's of some use and uh, speak to you again soon. I hope you found this short video tutorial useful. If you did, please click the like button. This helps promote the video on YouTube. If you've got any of your own tips or experience you'd like to share, or you've got an idea for a video, let me know in the comments section below. And if you aren't already a subscriber, consider subscribing and remember to click the little bell so you're notified when I release my next video. There are various links that might interest you in the description section under this video. Until next time, sell safe.